you. Overwhelmed my advice to a very, very dark place. I cried in front of a lot of people. I'm gonna cry. I'm very isolated. You are allowed to grieve. Please do not lose that hope. Sleigh bells ringing, diamonds blinging, carols singing, favorite season. So you've just received an autism diagnosis for your child. I was in the same position a year and a half ago and I can tell you it's all going to be okay. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys as a fellow autism mum about advice that I'd give new autism parents who've just received that diagnosis. The feelings that you feel when you first get that diagnosis are indescribable. You feel overwhelmed, you feel intimidated, you feel confused. Some people can feel shock, some people knew that it was coming. If you're an autism parent, comment down below one word that describes how you felt after you got that diagnosis. So you're sitting there in that room, whoever diagnosed your child, whether it be a pediatrician or a psychologist, they give you the result. One word I would describe that feeling was relief. We had been looking for answers for a little while, had our suspicions about Jacob, and when they gave us that diagnosis, it was almost like relief that we knew. We finally knew what we needed to do next. So I'm here to give you my advice. If I was to look back and give advice to myself back when I got that diagnosis, this is what I would say. When you first get that diagnosis, take a deep breath. Take some time to process what's just been given to you and your family. There is absolutely no rush. There is no race against time. You are entitled to just take a minute, process everything and figure out what you're going to do next. Because when you first get that diagnosis, things seem very overwhelming and very confusing and people are telling you to do different things. It can get too much. You definitely need to take that time to yourself and with your family to read through the report again, just understand what has just happened. The second piece of advice that I have would be, try not to forget that your child is still the same sweet, amazing baby as they were before the diagnosis. It can become all consuming and just taking the time to appreciate your child and be their parent almost. It's almost lost on autism parents. You're not expected to be a specialist or an expert straight away or even in the future, you're not expected to be that person. You're expected to be the parent and to be the loving mother or father that you are. The next piece of advice would be not to let yourself become paranoid or feel guilty that you could have prevented this. I know that that thought does run through a lot of parents' minds. Could I have prevented it? Did I do something wrong? You know, I, I was telling all of the therapists and all the service providers, I was like, is there something that I did that caused this? And Absolutely not. You did not cause your child to become autistic. They were born autistic. There is no research to say that anything causes autism. So please don't be hard on yourself. Please don't feel guilty because it's just not true. My next piece of advice would be not to let yourself become so isolated. I did this. I became very isolated. We lived in a new place where we didn't know very many people and Jordan worked away. He worked in Sydney a couple days a week. So I felt very, very isolated. Um, once Jacob had the diagnosis, it almost feels like, you know, you get the diagnosis and then that's, you know, that support is shut off. You're just left to your own devices to find your own support services and find your own early intervention. And it's just like very overwhelming. You just feel very isolated. And I'm here to tell you that you do not need to be. I wish that someone would have said this to me. I wish that someone would have told me to go seek a support group, go research what's in your area. Your local area would have many things to support you. The people that hand out the diagnosis, they don't tell you about that and you need to do that research, but do a quick Google search and you will find it. And it would be incredible. If you don't feel comfortable going to a support group online, I'm sure you found me that way. Um, I found that most of my support came from Instagram and YouTube and just finding fellow autism parents 
who had either gone through the process or were going through the process at the same time. It's so helpful to talk to people. It's so helpful to get advice from people. It's so helpful just to, you know, know that you're not alone and there are other people going through the same thing. So in saying that, I would really want you all to know, whoever's watching this video, you are very, very more than welcome to come over to my Instagram or comment down below, send me a message. If you have any questions, you just want someone to vent to, you just want to talk to someone, please, please do so because you need that outlet and you need that support. And I hope that maybe even not just me, maybe people that comment down below as well, find some people to talk to. Another piece of advice I would give to myself is to allow myself to grieve. I think that everyone should go through some sort of a grieving process and it is okay to do so. I felt so guilty feeling grief when we received Jacob's diagnosis. I really, really, really didn't want to be focusing on the negative sides of things. I didn't want to be focusing on all of that. And I felt bad when I did that, but it is okay to do that. You need to go through that grieving process to be able to become accepting of this new life that your family is going to be living. People often talk about grieving the life that they had imagined before the diagnosis, being able to accept a new life. You are very entitled to feel this way, to grieve. As much as you want to focus on, you know, it is going to be a good life and it's just going to be a different life, you are allowed to grieve. It's okay to cry. We all do it. We all did it. I cried. I cried on camera. If you guys want to see that video, it's up here. Um, I did a video straight after Jacob was diagnosed and we just talked about our feelings. Yeah, I cried in front of a lot of people. It is okay to cry and it is okay to feel that way. In saying that, my next piece of advice to follow on from that is to not lose your hope. Do not lessen your hope for your child. Don't stop dreaming for your child. Don't stop them from dreaming. It's interesting for me to say that you're allowed to grieve a life that you didn't have, but also please know that they are going to have an amazing life. They will have strengths in areas that may not have been what you had imagined, but it is gonna be a strength of theirs. They're gonna find happiness in things that, you know, might not be as typical, but they're still going to find that happiness in life and purpose in life. You are their biggest advocate. So please, please, please do not lose that hope. Dream big for your child and you will be amazed by it. I'm gonna cry. Oh, no, I'm not gonna cry. You will be amazed by the things that they can do. We're only a year and a half into this process. Jacob is almost four and he's always continuing to blow my mind with the things that he can do and the progress that he is making. So please do not lose that hope. The next piece of advice would be to take respite when you need it. I'm very much the one who was trying to take on everything by myself, to do everything for myself and not accept any help, not accept any support from family. I did get so much support from family and there were times where I would just be like, no, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do this and that and I'll watch the kids and I'll, you know, you can't do everything. You need to take respite. It took me a long time to realize that. Now, every so often, Jacob's grandparents will come up to visit or we'll go to visit them and they will watch them for a little bit, watch Jacob for a couple of hours or overnight, which, you know, allows us to sleep, you know, that sleep depth life, or it allows us to just socialize or go out and just be ourselves and not just parents for a little bit of time. You need that time. <laughs> you really need that time. I got into a very, very dark place when I wasn't getting any respite. I wasn't choosing to get any respite. And if you don't have that family network, you need to apply for funding to get respite. You can't do it 24 seven. You can't. <laughs> It's not possible. And lastly, I just wanted to finish off this video saying you are not alone. I'm going to say it three times because apparently if you say it three times, it really sticks in your head. You are not alone. You are not alone. 
you are not alone. You will be okay and you will adapt to your new normal. I don't think we can predict anything in life. So when life swings things our way, we just adapt to our new normal. And this is just one of those things. This is just one of those things that is going to change your life. Yes, I'm not going to lie to you. It is going to be a different life, but you can do it. You will adapt to that new life, new norm, and it will be great. I'm so glad I didn't cry in that video. If you are also a seasoned autism parent or someone who's um, already gone through that process, comment down below your biggest piece of advice for new autism parents. We need all the support we can get and I hope that my channel can be kind of a community and support network for those parents. Even seasoned parents, you know, we all don't know what's going on. We don't have it all together. We are learning. We are continuing to learn and adapt. It's a learning process, but you will be okay. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to give it a big thumbs up if you have liked this video and subscribe down below if you haven't already. We are doing Vlogmas, so watch out for those videos. I'll see you guys in my next one.